Hanson. Hashtag outfit my dad. Hillary Scott and the Scott family kicking us off here at the Opry. Man, we got a great show tonight. We also have music from the great Charlie Warsham, love him, and the amazing Lady A. I'm Bobby Bones, welcome to Opry Live. Now, by now, you're getting a pretty good taste of how great this show is and how cool this network is, Circle Network. It's the home of the Opry and all sorts of cool country music shows, seven days a week. So come hang out with us. Circle Network is in your city. Just go to circleplus.com or your cable guide, find out where. If you're on Dish, you'll find the Opry on channel 102. Now, we're serious about country music here. We're also serious about keeping it safe for everybody here. And that's thanks to our partnership with the Mayor's Office and Vanderbilt Medical Center. So we appreciate you guys so much. I'll tell you what else we appreciate. 
families that make music together. When you hear Hillary's parents, Lang Scott and Linda Davis sing, it is no surprise what a fantastic singer she is. It's such a treat to hear them all together. Here is Hillary Scott and the Scott family from the Grand Ole Opry. Thank y'all so much. Welcome everybody, however you're tuning in tonight. We are so honored to be here on this stage, the Grand Ole Opry House. I'm Hillary Scott. This is my beautiful family, my sister Riley, my mother Linda Davis, my daddy Lang Scott, and mom, this is not, I mean, you've been here over the years quite a few times. And Every you're... time is such a special <laughs> night, and this is really, really beautiful to get to be with my family. Yes. Uh, it never gets old, does it? It doesn't. We're so honored, and you know, we're actually about to celebrate a little bit of an anniversary at the end of July. will be four years since we released our album that we got to release as a family called Love Remains. And so we want to do the title track off that album for Can you. Can I say one thing? Yes. I would love to, this, we would love to dedicate this song to the uh, Caps family. Lynn and I were in here a little earlier this week for a wonderful celebration of life for a wonderful man and musician, Jimmy Caps. He played on this stage for over 60 years yes. and uh, he will be sadly missed. So this goes out to Michelle and his son, sons Mark and Jeff and um, our hearts are with you. We are born one fine day, children of God on our way. Mama smiles and daddy cries, a miracle before they rise.
Tonight's Opry performance is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Let's get back to nature. Welcome to another week, friends. Man, I tell you, I get to come in this every week, and I, and I sit in this empty room, and I'm lucky enough to get to watch the greatest artists in country music play on the stage, right? Every week I come in, I don't know, this is our 13th week, something like that, 13th week? So it's our 13th week, so I've been doing this since the beginning of the pandemic, and I sit, and I'm lucky enough to, to watch Soundcheck and to watch them even pick songs sometimes, what they're going to do. Um, and some of them I know better than others, and I'll go up to the front sometimes and, and have conversations. It's like Charlie Warsham coming up. He's a good friend of mine, so I went and talked to Charlie. Uh, but as the Scott family was playing a minute ago, and they played that song, like right before we went on the air, I mean, chills and was moved so much that I went up and grabbed Linda and Hillary, and I was like, hey, I get to see everybody play, but that is really one of the most special things that I've been able to see in this empty Opry house. And I'm so glad that you guys are here and got to see that. And also, your friends should probably get to see it too. Now, what I mean by that is if you're watching on Facebook, you can hit share. And then it will pop up on their screen. You know how this works. Because sometimes you'll get people doing dumb stuff on Facebook. You're like, how did that get in my feed? It's because one of your dumb friends shared it. But you be the smart friend. You be the good friend that shares the Opry with your friends right now on Facebook. Push that button. Thanks for watching. We really, really have a special show. So the Scott family there, Charlie Warsham coming up, who you're going to love. If you don't know Charlie Warsham, I think after this, you'll probably go and download or stream all of Rubber Band, the album, which is one of my favorite albums. So he's coming up. And then Lady A. It's, it's three fantastic artists. So also, you guys continue to send your comments. I have a bunch of them here. I can read some of them just to prove that I'm watching because as you guys write things, I'm like, I should say this on the air. So let me give you a few shout-outs here. Uh, Tracy Loves Da Roostas says she's watching from Sydney, Australia. Why do you love Da Roostas? Uh, also, John Sinclair from Fountain Valley, California. Jerry Bard says he's watching in Vegas. And Bonnie Pellin says, tuned in from Massachusetts. Now, we got a lot of you guys that are saying you should be here for this because you had planned to come for a vacation. We're so sorry you can't be here, but we're so happy that we can keep this show on the air for you guys. Some of you guys are asking, hey, uh, when are you going to be back? When can people in the seats? I'll tell you what I know inside that next break coming up in a minute. Okay? I got a little inside information. So uh, thank you guys. I got to go back to TV, so you're going to see me straighten my shirt. But I uh, appreciate you guys being here. Hey, welcome back to Opry Live. If there ever was a renaissance man of country music, this next guy is it. He writes songs like he's had 10 lives. He plays anything with strings. He sings like there's no tomorrow. He's a member of Old Crow Medicine Show. And on top of all of that, the nicest guy ever. Here's the pride of Grenada, Mississippi, my friend, Charlie Warsham. Thank you, Bobby Bonds. Thank you, Mike Terry. Everybody tuning in to the Grand Ole Opry tonight. Uh, I really want to thank the Grand Ole Opry for thinking to have me on the bill at such a important time in history and in the Opry story. Uh, and I'm grateful that the Opry spoke out this week against racism. Uh, for me, having grown up in Mississippi, that, that means a lot. Uh, I was trying to think of what songs I could sing tonight that might speak to this moment. And I remember my favorite picture hanging on the walls back here uh, in the dressing rooms at the Opry. And it's a picture of Porter and Dolly sharing a moment with Paul and Linda McCartney. And when I thought of that picture, I knew I had the right song to sing. And I want to dedicate this song tonight to the families of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and Richard Brooks, uh, and everybody out there who is fighting the good fight for justice. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life And you were only waiting For this moment to be free Blackbird, fly Blackbird, fly Into the light of a dark black Into the light 
blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly On your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise And you were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to arise It really is an honor to stand on the stage every single night. And uh, it's good to feel the butterflies that I have. I've been on the stage over 50 times now, and I think this is the most butterflies I've felt since the first time I was here. I'm so grateful to be a part of country music, and I think that uh, country music owes a debt of gratitude uh, to the black community. Uh, when the fiddle met the banjo, that's when country music was born, and Fiddle came over from Europe, but uh, the banjo made its way to our shores uh, on the slave ships from Africa. And in fact, the first instrument ever heard on the Opry uh, broadcast on WSM was the harmonica played by a man named D. Ford Bailey, who's in the Country Music Hall of Fame, a black man who lived here in Nashville. Uh, and long before Hank Williams stood on this stage and uh, sang Love Sick Blues, the originator of that song was a black man from Georgia named Emmett Miller singing the lovesick blues. The Carter family, the first family of country music, uh, whose songbook kicked off this whole thing of country. Uh, A.P. Carter, the patriarch of that family, uh, was friends with a, a black man named Leslie Riddle who took him into the hills and the hollers uh, in Virginia. That's where they found the songs that started country. Uh, Jimmy Rogers from my home state of Mississippi, his biggest hit was a song called Blue Yodel Number no. 9, and it was a collaboration with Louis Armstrong. Perhaps the most consequential record in the history of country music, the record that probably gave country music more new fans than any other album of any, any time, uh, was a record that Ray Charles made called Modern Sounds in Country and Western. And uh, we don't have a perfect record in country. Uh, we've not always lived up to our ideals. Uh, there are things that uh, we should examine and change and things we should apologize for, and, and that's an okay thing to do. There's no shame uh, in admitting your mistakes. In fact, I think that's a sign of strength and character. And uh, I'm going to sing a song that uh, just poses a, a simple question. I was lucky to write this song with my hero, Vince Gill. And uh, it poses a simple question. And a question I've been asking myself a lot these days is what does this moment make possible? Because it's a time of a lot of division, but it's also a time where we have an opportunity to grab a hold of hope and, 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 take those words that start our constitution, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union. Uh, we, can, we can look at those words and we can make a more perfect union right now. And growing up in Mississippi, it's home to so much country music, it's also home to a lot of the, the darkest chapters of the civil rights era, and it's easy to think that the 1960s were a long time ago, but they, they weren't that long ago. And uh, so I just encourage everyone to ask that question, what, what does this moment make possible? Picture show on a Friday night. A good night kiss in the front porch light. Were we better off in black and white? Were we better off in black and white? When they told the truth on the news at night. Too far left and too far right. Were we better off in black and white? We still help our friends in need, but we struggle with too much greed. We got lessons left to learn. In a past that just won't burn Were we better off in black and white? 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 Were we better off
better off in black and white well, Some days yes, some days not quite and There'll be times you have to fight Were we better off in black and white struggle with too much grief We got lessons left to learn And a past that just won't burn Being kind means more than being right Were we better off in black and white Pray our best is still in sight. Were we better off in black and white? Oh, I just thought about how I was talking about everything, uh, and uh, I just realized the only two people I know with a perfect track record are Jesus and Dolly Parton. So I'm gonna leave y'all with a song here by my friend Don Schlitz. And I think it's a song version of Matthew 25, 40. What you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. Oscar was an angel. And he used to walk the streets, shouting out some prophecy at everyone he'd meet. He was a local fixture, like a cop out on a beat. Folks said he'd been shell-shocked long ago And more than that, no one seemed to know Oscar was a walker At least four miles twice a day Entire length of Main Street He'd be shouting on the way And I have no idea Where he heard the things he'd say but he was not your normal voice of doom It was a happy song sung slightly out of tune And he'd say Everyone will die and go to heaven And we will all be angels someday What you are in this world don't count for nothing we're on the children, we're just lost along the way. But we will all be angels someday. Well, I worked at the Rialto, I took tickets at the door. And Oscar, he'd come by every day about half past four. And he'd pay to see a movie he'd seen ten times before. Mostly we just let him in for free He'd watch five minutes and he'd come and talk to me And he'd say, everyone will die and go to heaven And we will all be angels someday And where you are in this world don't count for nothing yeah, We're on the children just lost along the way But we will all be angels someday Well, it's going on ten years Since I left my hometown I went back last summer For a week and hung around And I looked out for Oscar He was nowhere to be found Someone said they finally had to commit him And he died before they had time to forget him Now I ain't about to argue 
Oscar's train to jump the tracks But I bet my last dollar On a plain simple fact That he never said one word About me behind my back And the way that I was raised to understand Well that alone that makes him the better man And everyone will die and go to heaven and we will all be angels someday And where you are in this world don't count for nothing Cause we're only children, we're just lost along the way But we will all be angels someday Yeah, we will all be angels Thank you, Grand Ole Opry. Tonight's Opry performance is in association with Shriners Hospitals for Children. You know, I come and I talk to you guys and I try to be the voice of you guys a lot of times because you can't be in these seats here. So I sit here and I watch and um, obviously I, I didn't get to watch that whole performance and sound check because he didn't do it like that. But I tell you, as I come on talk about the Scott family and how I was moved there, I think uh, just when I think I, I've seen the most moving thing possible, that happens. You know, there are some things, too, that you see and you go, man, I wish that would go viral. You can't control virility of anything on the Internet, but Charlie coming on and just giving a history of country music and, and uh, playing a song to him that felt like the times uh, was really, I hate to say it twice in a show, and I've never said it once, much less twice. It's the most special thing I've ever seen here. And you guys got to watch it, and I'm so glad we got to keep this going for you guys, and, and you got to see something like that. That's, that's a very special moment here at the Grand Ole Opry in country music and just, just uh, being an American. Like, to use that platform to, to speak so wonderfully, to play music that great, that's Charlie Warshall. That's why I'm glad he's my friend. You're not going to find a more authentic guy than that. Uh, so just, just special. If you love Charlie... Or maybe it's your first time to see Charlie as you're watching this. You could be watching this on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube. You just stumble across it. Uh, one of my favorite records is Rubber Band that he did uh, a few years ago. So check it out. He's got another one called The Beginning of Things, which is great too. But just uh, a special performance. I'm glad you guys got to see it. But man, I'm sitting over there like I thought I'd seen it all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, before this show came on, and I hope you guys were able to see it, there was a, a competition between my buddy Chris Jansen and I. It was an outdoorsman competition. He played last week. We had a little competition. And so we gathered all this stuff and hunting and fishing and camping. And your dad can win it. It's the Outfit My Dad sweepstakes. All you have to do is post a picture of your dad doing something outdoors. And the hashtags are Outfit My Dad and Sweeps. Do those. If your dad wins this or your husband wins this who's a dad, he's going to be the happiest dad of the whole Father's Day. Because this is some legit stuff. So check it out, and thanks to Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, and just we had a real special time. The show's funny, so hopefully you get to check that out. But even if you didn't get to see it, we picked out a lot of stuff. So Outfit My Dad, that's the hashtag, and then hashtag Sweeps. They're on the screen right now. So you'll see that. Win it for your pops or your husband because it's fantastic. I don't want to spoil it, but all right, I got to go back to TV. Real special moment there. I'm glad you guys are here. Glad I could talk to you about it afterward. All right, back in a second. <clears throat> Hey, welcome back to Opry Live. I'm Bobby Bones. I mentioned last week that Chris Jansen and I had a fun debate on who was more of an outdoorsman, him or me. So we had a little competition at a nearby Bass Pro Shop to see who could assemble the best outdoor gear packages. Now, we filled shopping carts with gear from fishing, camping, grilling, as you can see here. By the end of it, we put together a ton of great stuff, all from Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Chris and I and Bass Pro Shops would like two dads to have everything we picked out. So enter your dad to win by posting a photo of him in the outdoors using the hashtag OutfitMyDad and hashtag Sweeps. Hopefully, you and your dad will have a great time using it. It's going to be great. Last week, I said good things come in threes. There's no finer example than these three right here. Make some noise in your living rooms for Lady A, Grand Ole Opry. Lara 
us tonight. We're honored, honored to be here, sharing the stage. Charlie Warsham, y'all give it up. That was incredible. His words, his music was beautiful. And then also so special to be able to share the Opry stage tonight with my family. We are honored. Um, can't say it enough. Every time we step on the stage is unbelievably special. And uh, we want to do the last or the first song off of our latest record. And um, we can't believe, honestly, what what this song did. And we're just so honored. And thank you to the songwriters. And it became our 10th number one at Country Radio. This is What If I Never Get Over You. It's supposed to.
All right, we're still here. There's uh, nobody else really in the seats except for myself, so I'm gonna join the concert. I feel like I'm representing you guys. Last week I was clapping a little bit myself, and they, they felt like that was a little weird, so I didn't clap tonight. But glad you guys are here. Keep posting your comments. Let's see, James Charles says, Yeehaw, love Lady A, with a lot of hearts and rose emojis. Kristen Greisbach Fala says, Thank you, Lady A. My kids are six and nine. They've listened to you with me since they were babies. Our family loves you and your talent. Thank you for who you are. And then finally, I'll read one more. Sylvia Sweeney says, Hi, Nashville. Enjoying watching from Donegal, Ireland. So wherever you are, thank you for being a part of the Opry family tonight. We're just thrilled we can continue to bring the music to you guys. Um, someone asked, do I remember the first time that I interviewed Lady A? Here's the thing about Lady A. It's three... And don't be fooled by thinking Dave Haywood's a, a small guy because of Charles. I used to think that too. I was at the front of the, the album cover and, you know, you see Charles who's tall and you think that, well, Dave Haywood's a pretty short guy. I'm a little over six foot and Dave Haywood's a good inch and a half taller than me. Charles is a monster. We played a show with Charles once and he came on after us and he was using my mic. They literally had to unbend my mic so he could sing into it. Like, he's that big of a guy. And that's what happened the first time that I interviewed them. We didn't have, we had no mics that they could actually talk into because Charles was so tall. And he's very loud. He's the loud, funny one of the group. Hillary's the sweet one of the group. And Dave is just kind of there making sure nobody says anything wrong. Dave is the brains behind the operation. So, yeah, I've interviewed them, you know, lucky enough now to know them personally. Dave Haywood is also so nice that when we're, we're neighbors now. When I moved in, he sent me a box of candles and strawberries and bread. I think he was the only neighbor, to, and I didn't know if people still did this anymore. He was the only neighbor who sent a bunch of stuff to the house that welcome to the neighborhood. So, you know, a lot of people will talk about how nice country music stars are. And it's not because they're country music stars. What I think, what I feel is that a lot of the country music stars are raised different. You know, I, I feel like if, you know, you were born and you were raised good, that stays with you as you get older. And I think that's what you see when people say country music stars are so nice. No, I think just th these are good people raised by good parents or grandparents. And, you know, then it translates even when they get famous. So uh, glad you guys are here with us. Now, I did say that I would tell you guys about whenever we're going to open this back up. I'll tell you guys what I know coming up in the next segment. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm Bobby Bones. We're at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee.
need to catch my breath after that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is so much fun, y'all. Thank you to everybody tuning in. Thank you to our band coming out, making this feel so big and loud for us. And this next song we're gonna do, when we put our album together, we wanted to make the most honest record we've ever made. And this next song we're gonna do for you was one of the most honest songs that I've ever been a part of writing. And it's because I was thinking about my little girls and my bandmates' sons and just the children and the next generation that are coming up and just wanting to leave this world better than we found it and uniting in love. And this song means more today than it ever has for us. We want to sing it for you right now. I hope you enjoy it and can feel the words like we feel them singing it. This is Let It Be Love. See the thing about envy in me Comes out of nowhere, hits so hard I can hardly breathe In the middle of the night when I need sleep You see, that's the thing about envy Yeah, the thing about angry in me I'm strong, then I'm down on my Scream when the silence should speak You see, that's the thing about angry But love, Yeshua I know it's hard sometimes to see it But it does Oh, it's a power that will rise up A well that never dries up The one and only feeling you can trust let it be first, let it be us, let it be love, let it be love, let it be love. You see the thing about humility in me, I put myself a little higher than I should be. Forget I'm just one drop in a big old sea. A little more you and a little less me. Cause love is true love. I know it's hard sometimes to see it, but it does. Who oh, is the power that will rise up? A well that never dries up. The one and only feeling you can trust. So let it be first. Let it be. Heart is done with all it's breaking and all the second chances you keep taking let it be love let it be love so Tonight's Opry performance is in association with Shriners Hospitals for Children. 
Hey, thanks. I want to say thanks to you for watching and also a big thanks to Dish because so many more people get to watch the Grand Ole Opry because of Dish. So a special thanks to all of them for letting this happen. Dish.com slash Opry Live if you want more information. If you have Dish Channel 102, maybe you didn't even know. You're watching right now online. You didn't even know you could watch it on Dish. So Dish Channel 102. So uh, Dish.com slash Opry Live. You know, back in the day, when I used to wait tables, you know, sometimes I'd work a double. And you would go and I would work the brunch shift. I would go, I'd take a little nap, sometimes in my car. And then I would get my clothes, I had an old tuxedo I had to wear at this restaurant. Then I would go and I'd work the night shift too. That was called a double. I feel like Hillary Scott's working a hard double here. She started the show, and man, she sings so hard and, and so pure all the time. But uh, really appreciated to Hillary for, for, for pulling a double. So that's pretty awesome. Also, let me mention this too, because this is a great time for Father's Day. We did this thing with Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. It was Chris Jansen and myself. There's a competition. We ran through the store making the best packages we can make for your dad, hopefully, or your husband who's a dad. Uh, it's the big Father's Day challenge. Just do hashtag outfit my dad and hashtag sweeps. And, you're, and there are two packages, not just one. There are two. But you post a picture of your dad doing something outside. It could be lawn darts. It could be laying out on a chair. Or you could be fishing. Uh, put those two hashtags that you see on the screen right now on that picture. And we're going to pick somebody. And you're going to win a lot of stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was competing. And then whenever it was time to do the, uh, the camping part, I was just grabbing stuff. So you're going to get, like, boat speakers. I just wanted to win the competition. And it'll be running all on Circle Network, too. Uh, so be sure to check that out. It, you have to do nothing except post a picture of your dad for Father's Day anyway, which you're probably going to do. Because if you're not shouting out your dad during Father's Day, like, that stinks. Uh, let me say this, too. We, we were talking kind of behind the scenes here. We don't know when we're going to open. Uh, we had hoped that people could be in it here in, you know, late July. Uh, but what happened with the mayor is they didn't move us to the next phase yet. Like, so we, we still don't know. I know that that may be not the answer you want, but that's the answer that I know right now is there still isn't a concrete plan on people to be here inside the Grand Ole Opry. But what I can tell you is the show will go on. The circle will, will, will stay unbroken. That was the whole goal when we started this show, and it's the whole goal um, to be able to show you this. i got to go back to TV, so I'm going to, like, do this weird thing I do. So uh, thank you guys for watching. <clears throat> Welcome back to Opry Live. It's been a great night of handcrafted music from the Scott family, Charlie Warsham, and Lady A. You really can't ask for a better night than that. Next week's Father's Day, we'll have a special show with super dads Darius Rucker and Clint Black to send us home. Here once again is Lady A. Thank you for being here with us at the Grand Ole Opry. Hope you have a safe and wonderful night, everybody.
It's a quarter after one I'm all alone and I need you now I said I wouldn't call I'm a little drunk and I need you now yeah. Oh, and I don't know how I can do without I just need said we got a little more time and uh, I want to say something I think this is a very important time in our history and uh, I've become a very much more religious man uh, recently and I think this is not by accident that we're getting a good hard look at ourselves and what we want the future to look like for our children and uh, this was a song that we put out uh, a ways back and went until I had kids and really I feel like I learned a lot about myself and what kind of legacy I want to leave behind that this song means a lot more to me right now. Let's just do a little little bit of this until we run out of time. This is Hello World. Well, hello world. How you been? Good to see you. Thank you for having us. We love you. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed it. Tell me where Tim Buck 